we have like nine different things running, so we're just gonna get it all off. Re- get it all going. <laughs> Sick. And then we're gonna have to, we're gonna um we have to start the episode with a uh, a little read. Okay. And then and then we'll introduce you. Okay. Cool. Sweet. Yeah. Just some. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why the camera's not working, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. It's all good. It's we're all not doing good. anything. Anything evil over here? I just spilled <laughs> everywhere. We're also clothed, nothing, so you don't have to worry about evil, video chatting with two naked guys. Nothing evil has ever been done on Discord. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. Yeah. This isn't. Nothing bad has ever taken place. The number one pedophile okay, communication website. Actually, before you, can you turn Will up a little bit? Um. Or is that gonna fuck with things? I can turn this up. Oh, perfect. There. Is that good? Yeah, I think so. Will, can you say something? Yeah, is this better? Yes, it okay, is. Okay, cool. You. I gotta be careful because okay. I'm gonna <clears throat> grab British people, but they're around me everywhere. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're you're like deep in enemy waters right now. I'm surrounded. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're just getting in position. And we'll yeah, just do a quick little, <clears throat> quick little read. It won't be anything long, and then we'll introduce you. Okay. Get my cords. untangling some cables. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> Thank you for narrating <laughs> it. Yeah, no problem. Well, without video, it's a, you might you might feel... You will yeah, don't worry, Will. <laughs> You're going to have to do like, closed <laughs> captioning for like, blind people. Uh, we do that already. Uh, half our audience is blind, so... You describe it? I'm just making it worse. I'm sorry, Will. Yeah, we do describe the podcasting. <laughs> half your audience is blind? <laughs> Blinded by the other half? Yeah. It, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, half our audience is grooming the other half on Discord. <laughs> you guys are just in the middle. Yeah, we're just a sort of middleman to um, sex abuse, you, basically. You're the groomer highway. <laughs> yeah, we're this. We're what's called the grooming Silk Road. <laughs> yeah, we don't do the grooming, but we do facilitate it. We are. The we provide <laughs> a space. We're the we're the we're the highway that gets you between the states. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, okay, okay, we're just gonna. We'll just do our quick uh, ad read, and then we'll then. just hang tight, and then we'll introduce you to the guys. Hell yeah! Nice. Okay, just lighting up a ciggy. You take your penis in your hand. It's soft and small and kind of embarrassing, but you tug on it and think sexy thoughts. You think sexy thoughts about boys when you tug on your penis it gets harder and harder you jerk on your penis it's so hot you're having such a good time you tug on your penis more and then goo comes out and it was very nice all right thanks for bearing (laughs) with us through that (coughs) yeah sorry just Just a little something to keep the lights on do a do a quick little read there we decided that um every time so we have a we're joined by a, a wonderful guest this evening. If you're an old head of the show, um, by a bloody great guest, by a damn bloody great guest. If you're one of the guys who started listening to the show after um, everyone was being mean to us in the comments, <laughs> you won't know who this is. Yeah. But if you're an old head, an OG, what we like to call a real one, yeah, you'll be familiar with our guest. Today yeah. we're joined by across the pond, beamed in through um, wonderful Jayish technology, Will Hannigan, everybody. Nice to be here. Happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, intercontinental, intercontinental ballistic comedian. Yeah, the British yeah. could not intercept this communication. <laughs> all the all the way from across the pond. It's far. How's it going over there, man? It's great. It's great. Is it good? <laughs> yeah. Have you been have you been stabbed yet? No. Um there's a lot of like I think the scariest thing here is like kids on mountain bikes or uh, adult men on mountain bikes <laughs> so, like i know what, what do they do they wear like british cyclists yeah they wear they they're you know like how like in meek mill music videos you see like uh young scary children like uh, doing wheelies on <laughs> dirt bikes what do you mean <laughs> what do you mean scary <laughs> you know <laughs> Aggressive, yeah, driving yeah, yeah. fast, yeah, right. this, this, angry, yeah. The speed that it, what the, which they're going is scary. 
Um, right. They, they're doing wheelies. It's like they do that here, but they do it on pedal bikes. Or, do you, uh, how how do you get around there? Do you have a car? I have a, a bicycle. I don't have a car. So you're one. You're uh, you're a mountain, a mountain bike. bike? Kid. No, I'm I'm I have to bike through <laughs> groups of them, and they make fun of me. <laughs> oh damn! They, or do they go slow or? They they go so slow in the bike Are lanes, you? and then you have to like kind of carefully pick your time to go around them, and then they whatever your bike name is, they yell that at you as though it were a homophobic slur. <laughs> This is that they're uh, they're mods, right? Are they mods or rockers who are harshing on you? I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only type of British people we know. I think those are that's sort of like the British version of like the West Side Story gangs. Really? Right. Do they have dumb haircuts or like? Are uh, they wearing leather jackets or like sport coats? They wear like they they love wearing like balaclavas. There is like <laughs> oh, way scary. Yeah, the, yeah. It is actually <laughs> terrifying. There's like a Venn diagram between like. Who wears ba- balaclavas and it's like um, young people up to like no good at all, and uh, immigrants doing Uber Eats on electric. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So, what would you rate England out of ten? So yeah. Mm. Out of ten, out of ten pints at the local pub, what would you rate England? Mm. Ah, I get, I'd give it a ten. I, if you are here, you should. Wow. Be, yeah, you should be drunk all the time. Disgusting. <laughs> ten, pints, <laughs> 10 pints out of 10 for England. I feel like the, the old guy populace in England is probably pretty a pretty nice bunch. They do have... Guys in their early 60s. Yeah, like if... I mean, the way like A&W is like packed in the morning, they just have that kind of... That's like what this whole country is like A&W in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> just packed out all the time? It is packed out, racked out with old, old guys. Big guts. <laughs> they do big guts. <laughs> and they, uh, Damn, this honest, the more you talk about it, the more that this sounds like a perfect country. <laughs> yeah. Brutal, like just full. <laughs> big old kids in balaclavas, big fat guys. Fat, like thumb it's looking crowded. Guys. It's mostly. It's, but the reason we. It's mostly kids in balaclavas. The reason we. Fat guys. Sorry. That's terrifying. I like that they yell your ma- your bike brand at you. That's very funny. Yeah. Um, Haro. What do you have a poofter? A poofter bike brand? No, I have. Um, it's spelled F A G G O. Damn, that's such a cruel joke they're doing to you over there. <laughs> you can't help that your bike's. I can't believe I painted that on my own bicycle. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> the, the guy at the store said that the Fagiolis are the cheapest ones, but they're the most reliable. Yeah, he said that <laughs> I was that or a Montclair. It's very safe on this one. No, I have a slant. That's what it's called. And there you go. They go get. get oh, get, that's really close to a racial slur. Yeah, I think so. Or like a um, sexist slur. Depending on what region of the, depending on what region of the states you're in, that is a slur. I think it could definitely be used as one. It's, yeah, part, I've heard that in non movies before. Part of a slur. I think you could sell this sl- that slur for parts. Like the slant needs something else with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay, our top story that our listeners have been um, banging, banging on the doors, wanting to know about, yeah. Yeah. that you are our on-the-scene expert for, yeah. Princess Kate, what news do you have for us? Um, she has cancer. Okay, <laughs> well, that's the most recent news. Could you, could, you make, <laughs> could you make that a little funny for us? We're, <laughs> we're a comedy program. That's... <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> How is that not funny? <laughs> I've heard that that's... F- I've f- you know, people in North America are saying that that's a f- fake. And that she's... That's a deep faked video. It's What's the word on the street over there? I mean, they've been saying On that. the ground. They've been saying that for a while. They've been saying that all of it was deep fake. They said they deep faked... They, the de- they just stood their ground on deep fake. And they're just gonna... They're gonna hold their ground until they're right, I think. I mean, yeah. we, we reported here in this space last week that she's actually dead. Oh, you think she's actually yeah. dead? Can, can you? No, her marriage. Well, is, that's her, the rep- her marriage is dead apparently. <laughs> well, that's the reporting that I've heard here. Yeah, is he's from, cheating on some sort of? From me, I said it. <laughs> she's cheating on. No, wait, he's cheating on her. Hold on. Right. With let me like go to my on the look with, 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 with my, a man. Let me go to my on the field correspondent, uh, my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> do people like um do they do they actually care about the like the royal family in England or is it like yeah, hold on I'm asking my girlfriend like, um, your question <laughs> This is exci- this is the first time a woman has appeared on this program uh, Yeah <laughs> 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 Gird your loins boys 
No, she, no rude comments. She's not gonna appear on it, but I'll field. Your this is a, this is as close as we've come. This is as close as you're gonna <laughs> get. As close as it'll. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, what is your question about the royal family? Um, what was the question? What's what's going on there? Is Kate is Kate dead? Oh, is she yeah. alive? Is she Kate, a clone? What's going on there? Is Kate dead or is she alive or is it a clone? She's alive. She's alive. She. We're we're hearing she's alive. We're hearing she's alive. <laughs> she had a what? Operation. She had an operation in February. This showed that there was cancer. So he's going to test me. There was cancer. cancer, and now she's getting preventative chemotherapy. Hmm. All right, folks. You hear her here first. Okay. You hear her here very first. That's what my. Thank that's you. what my. Thank you for that's that. what my fucking girlfriend thinks. <laughs> our our thinks field reporters are saying. <sighs> yeah. So take that with a grain of salt. But that's what. <laughs> <laughs> that's what <laughs> yeah, she is getting an operation. So take that for what it is. <laughs> an operation that her battery because she's an android. She's a robot. They're getting her. They're finally getting her dick removed. I think. <laughs> has one has that on. been all the chatter over there? Do people actually? Yeah. Do people actually care about the royal family there, or is it the way people talk about like um, Justin Bieber here in Canada? I think it's the way people talk about just like I, I can't really get a read on it because like you start talking to British people and you're like I can't even fucking handle talking to you long <laughs> enough to figure out what's going on in your world. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, well, I feel like they're that's a whole country of like um, like rural Alberta. Well, I think there's like, what's your what's your favorite like British archetype of person you've run into? Because mm. I know you got your upper class toffs, you got your Barry age sixty threes, you got your balaclava children, balaclava children. I, actually, balaclava children, like I like them the most because I don't think that they're about being English at all. I think they're just about being balaclava children. I think that's being, yeah, mm. kind of evil and chilling. Yeah, because you see them in okay. later form, which is like mountain bike man who wasn't a balaclava child but was definitely violent as a child and then now has a mountain bike and um it, it'll look like a the, there'll be a guy who like looks like daniel craig like not like handsome but just like in that sort of like really tough like you couldn't kill him you know he wouldn't die if you tried yeah. like and he'll just yeah. be on a mountain bike so <laughs> those those are probably my favorite and then there's like british people like um they have mall uh like they have swamp um people here like pajama pant oh. people you know what i mean like really oh yeah, yeah yeah they have like the original whatever that you think like the archetypes are in like america for like americans they were they're from here so all like the Whoa. original pokemon are f here and whatever <laughs> fucked up Yu-Gi-Oh form is taken over in America is just over there. This is like the, this is like the original one, like the, the pure form. Yeah, like they've got like Cookie Monster pajama bottom, yes. Fox Racing hoodie. Damn, something like that. But it's like not Fox Racing. It's like something like yeah. something bicycles. Something about bicycles because I don't think they really fuck with dirt bikes. <laughs> like they fuck with e-scooters. I didn't real. I didn't realize that mountain bikes were such an integral part of British culture. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Mountain bikes, e-bikes, and uh, they banned e-scooters because um, there's just too they were like too easy to get on and get off and rob people with. <laughs> we're, I think we're close to that though. Here? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you could just if you look at just my numbers for e-scooter robberies, I'm I'm pushing us close to getting us. We've been robbed on a youth scooter? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't know how bad things have gotten in Canada. Really? Tell me. Everyone everyone has to. It's like Mad Max on e-scooters right now. <laughs> you know, they had... <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, there's, like, big ones with, like, eight guys on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. torture house and shit. Jump off, like, a bunch of clowns out of a car. Yeah, and they're all in hand spray you. paint and <laughs> attacking you. <laughs> wow. Bunch yeah. of guys with, uh... Pla counter um, contraband plastic bags full of glue that they huff <laughs> and rob yeah. you. Yeah, well, nothing's really changed. Like you left when it was like when living downtown was like twenty eight days later, mm -hmm. and it's still that. Yeah, it's still like uh, it's just still you and the zombies. Now, like and, the uh, the bags they're using are like a little older and more chemically. 
Yeah, well, now they're, the plastic, the shopping bag has become like a homeless rarity, you know, so the ones that have them have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they have a ton. Yeah, what's the status of shopping bags in Ingerland? Yeah, do they, they have do them still? plastic ones that are reusable that you have to pay more for, but you can bring it back in and get changed for a new one at any time. So if it, when it rips, you can just bring it back in and they'll give you a new one. But you have to pay for it. Damn, that's like heaven. <laughs> it's like heaven compared to this hell world that we live in. Damn, that sounds like a utopia. It, it, Damn. It should Perfect be. Country. It should be. Like, realistically, like, they should be happy with what they have. Like, things are pretty good here in terms of, like, infrastructure, in terms of, like, food costs, in terms of, like, um, just, like, life in general. It should be, like, a higher quality of life. But you're around there and they're... They're the most miserable people um, <laughs> I've ever met, and they're and they're like racist in a way that isn't. Uh, they don't look around. They don't look side to side. Oh, damn! Because they don't. Well, they don't sorry, how is that racist? Well, they don't like when they're racist. They don't. They're not like checking at all. Oh, oh, yeah. I getcha. I yeah, getcha. Yeah. yeah, they don't have to shoulder check. Them. In Alberta, you'll find. Just, Alberta still is uh, Canada still on shoulder checking. Big time, right? You shoulder check. You yeah. hit your blinker, and then you drop it. You know. Like you change. <laughs> yeah. Here? yeah, yeah. You say it mid vape exhale. Yeah. <laughs> so you can just be like, no, that was just my disposable vape. That wasn't. I didn't say that. <laughs> there was a bunch yeah. of smoke that just came out of my mouth. Definitely it's... wasn't me. No. Watermelon. And that's my head. crazy. It just seems like <laughs> it seems like England is just a country made up of like um, Canadians in their early sixties, but they're they're all all makes and models over there. Yeah, but they—I don't—I don't know if they even have like kids that are as hard as on them for being the way they are. Like, oh, everyone's just chill. Not, I don't know if they're like chill, but they're just like it's like a different kind of racist here. Because like you know, it's like uh, just like you get you get to see like a certain like obviously as a white person, I don't see um, the the other side of racism, like the one directed. We don't see race. No. None of, no, we don't. None of us see race. None of us see any of that. We don't see it. How could it be hard? It's easy for us. Things are good. Yeah, well, yeah. It's to- <laughs> I mean, I don't. I've never seen it, so it probably just doesn't happen, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, it's never happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> no. So why would I vote for something that's gonna stop something that never happens to me? You yeah. Know? I never mm-hmm. see it happen, but I definitely talk to a lot of people who do it to other people. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, I definitely, have, I I hear about it bragged to me a lot. Yeah, I, I haven't robbed the store, but I've eaten the candy. You know. <laughs> oh yeah. Are you are you into footy now? What's what's the news in footy? Mm, I don't know. They're they're um, they're really into it. Not. Have you been to a game? No, it's too expensive to go. It's so expensive. And then, well, I mean, you can go to like really? you can go to like community league once, and they're like, uh, I don't know. I think people get pretty into that too. Um, yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. It's have just, you been to a Greg's? No. Or a Tesco? No, I've been to a Tesco's. You haven't been to Greg's? No, I'm not going. I, I've heard that Greg's is a, <laughs> a great British delicacy. A great place to be racist is what I've heard. Friend of the well, not friend of the show, <laughs> guy who the show is fond of, Jimmy Brown. Yes. Has spoken very highly of Greg and your sausage rolls. Jimmy Brown. Your comment. Your, my comment is uh, I've avoided. Famous, <laughs> famous British music prodigy, Jim E. Brown. I have avoided anything that's like a British recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> they have like sausage rolls. It's a little piece of sausage and some fried dough. Yeah, I bet they do. <laughs> I'm sure they do. Your 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 face when he said that it looked like you you had your own like personal culinary nom go through your head, like all the shitty meals you've eaten there were like flying through your head. Well, okay, let's 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 uh, bust some stereotypes here. How is British food? Yeah, is it is it as bad as I've you, been led to believe? It's they really only have breakfast. That's what they have. <laughs> the full English blood sausage. Yeah, but that's not even like. It's it's whatever. It's like it might as well be a fucking potato. Like it's not. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just, so what's your what's your daily meal? You have some Greggs for breakfast. <laughs> I don't eat anything. And some fish and <laughs> actually, what I eat fish is, and chips for lunch. I eat disgusting. Full roast beef for dinner. I eat like an animal. I eat tuna out of the yeah. can and I eat. Uh, oh yeah. Scrambled eggs with beans and cheese. And uh, how are the beans? It is there, man. 
you know? Just, <laughs> just there. You, you seem like a... This feels like a, talking to a guy who's just spent, like, 20 weeks in, like, a, a like Afghani trench. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, yeah. it's, it's like, how's the... Um, how's the... <laughs> How's the food over there in, in Pakistan? And you're just like, it's fucking, you need it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you just have to eat. <laughs> Why would I describe the taste? It's not about that. <laughs> Why would I ever think about anything beyond sustenance yeah, right now? It's straight up just, I guess, yeah. some protein. That's pretty much what it is. I mean, uh, British, British food is like, they, they fuck with chicken big time. Um, nice. They, they, mm-hmm. they do pretty good. It's, it's fine. Like it's the chicken shops are like fine. How's the t- how's the tikka masala? Uh, we had one Indian place. classic British dish: chicken we had, tikka masala. We had one. We went to one Indian place, but then the, the bathroom, dude. The bra- bathrooms here are so gr- gross. Like they. Uh, oh they, really? Yeah, they'll they'll have a lot of them will have signs where they're like, please do not put toilet paper in the toilet. <laughs> Wait, what? Where do you put it? In the garbage? Yeah, but then they were Just covered in shit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just take it in your pocket and dispose of it outside <laughs> like a gentleman. Wherever wherever you put it is your business, as long as it's not in the fucking toilet. <laughs> so is there just, like, shit-covered toilet paper strewn everywhere? Um, I... Not really, because people see that, and then they go, well, I'm not going to take a shit here. <laughs> right, but some people would. I would imagine England is just a whole country of guys doing that Borat thing where they like, bag it with a dog. <laughs> <and take> it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has their own shit in little doggy bags leaving restaurants. I mean, yeah. Like, I've heard, I don't know if they still do this, I've heard in France at least some public bathrooms the toilet will just be like a hole in the floor. That would be an improvement for most of the places here. <laughs> really? Because at least it wouldn't be like. Because if I looked at a hole and then there was a sign that said, "Please don't put toilet paper in the hole," I'd be like, oh, "Fuck yourself! It's going in the hole. <laughs> I'm putting it in the hole." Yeah, not being able to flush toilet paper is like really gross. That would have me reconsider my entire poop <laughs> operation. Yeah. It's like, how do you? How do you? How is? How do you have something that's like, I can only eat, take shit. I can only take a huge shit, please. I can't consume. <laughs> Paper that disintegrates. I can only take. <laughs> yeah, they... I mean, probably it's that all their plumbing was like built in a time where people needed to like save their turds to like burn for heat. You know? <laughs> yeah, it was back in the time. Yeah, or just to throw out in the street. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that uh, London was bombed so much. I honestly would believe if like they were they were so used to rebuilding that they would like they'd miss steps a lot of the time. I think. Is this one done? Oh, yeah. Has you got the plumbing? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It's fine. And then, like, two years later, they're like, holy fuck, we can't use these at all. Yeah, I mean, it was also, like, probably invented before toilet paper was... Invented. These people are disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> You're really gross, man. Like... <laughs> I've heard of... I've heard vaping is, like... Huge. Everywhere. Huge. Like, they... Huge. Sell, I didn't know that. They sell it in, like, uh, pharmacies. They like sell it as like a Damn. here like quit smoking medicine. They have government <laughs> things that like uh, signs that say like vaping is better for you than smoking is. And, Damn. And, Damn. And, vape is medicine. And they don't. Vape is medicine. They don't even like smoke cigarettes. Like cigarettes. Like they do smoke cigarettes. You can buy cigarettes, but most of them like roll their own tobacco, which has to be like infinitely better for you than like yeah. vaping. Like what's the what's a what's a packet of what's a packet of fags go for over there? I don't know, man. I I I fly solo, <laughs> so I don't even know how much. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, that's yeah. yeah those know. disposable vapes are like uh, that's like inhaling like a nuclear bomb. Yeah, it's true. I have two right. In yeah, you've right got now. two in front. It's, of it's like a mini <laughs> two sitting on the. It's like a mini Mad Max spray can. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do feel crazy off the like. Uh, I was coming back from um, Peace River, and I had to buy like a gas station disposable vape, which is like a tier below the ones you can get normally, because mm. it's like they'll just sit in like a drawer for like two years. Ugh. And I had to buy one of those, otherwise I would have uh, attacked somebody. And it it makes you feel crazy, man. It makes you feel totally nuts. It is like a. It's like it's like a. I mean, it's on. A, it's like bug spray, and then like a little bit of like lavender. 
I legit feel better smoking um, counterfeit reservation cigarettes than I do when I used to vape. Oh, is that what they're called? Yeah, now? it's one of those. Sorry. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's vaping is one of those things that it's. It's like how well, I always feel bad, and then it's like, I, that's the last thing I'll ever. Um, like look look at as to like why I feel bad. Like I'll adjust my diet and sleep and what car I drive before it's, it's like still be double fisting vapes. Yeah, still car- carrying a spare just in case so I don't physically assault someone. <laughs> it can't be this glow stick I'm inhaling. It's gotta be something else. No, awesome. yeah, there's no way it's there's no way it's the it's the lighter fluid I've been inhaling for two years. No, they it they makes my back hurt every morning. <laughs> Yeah, vaping is like, it makes you feel like, well, it's like taking cooking oil and spraying your lungs with that. Yeah, nice and oil- lubricated. Yeah. And it, and it nice doesn't, because that's the thing is like, you smoke a cigarette and you stink. And that's your consequence. That's like God telling, that's God giving giving you a consequence is you smell weird. Yeah. No, wrong. <laughs> wrong. Fake. <laughs> fake news. <laughs> Actually, they smell good. Everyone likes it. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> right. I had more. I had more to my point, but I think you. I think you win. <laughs> now that I think about it, like you, you can go ahead with your with your fake news point. If you're no, it's caught. destroyed now. You're right. I forgot. I, forgot what I just had to drop in with a little editorial, <laughs> editorial opinion there. No. Our entire we have to we have to our entire audience is uh, like smelly four hundred pound guys who listen to like power metal. So we have to. We have to look out for them a little bit. Yeah, we got to pick our battles. I feel like this is, this podcast yeah. has only been played in in garages that reek like cigarettes. Actually, yeah, it's 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 played on the second monitor of extremely messy gaming setups, <laughs> basically only. Yeah. <laughs> nice. yeah, shout out Legacy Rose for yeah. those great pictures of forcing your friends in their gross gaming lairs to listen to. We just show. got actual confirmation that this yeah, this is only listened to while people are like gaming and it's on the second <laughs> monitor and there's like a 40 of Tito's <laughs> bug and spray. bug spray on the counter. Someone just whipped an ashtray yeah. at a blow up doll. They're pissed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've really we've really b- blown up since we last chatted. Yeah, really? we have a lot more. We have a we have at least a dozen new fans. A, at least <laughs> at least a dozen guys. What happened with the mean comments? <laughs> or have you gone over this? We br- oh, we they preached. they have amplified Tenfold. <laughs> well, we, we we like what happens. This happens every time our the show like breaches containment. Like we 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 start reaching more people than we should at that given time. Right. And then a bunch of like normal people will find it and be like, "This is awful," oh. and be very mean in the comments. But then then it it, it, it the waves pass, mm-hmm. and then the and the we get left with like two or three chill ass bros, two or three cool weed guys who, uh, yeah, just sure. listen to us while they while they play games some barnacles which yeah <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah so we get some barnacles that's yeah. chill but that's how this show started was us being like we're gonna make a podcast exclusively for your second monitor while you're gaming mm-hmm. um and then and now it's it's just sort of a self-actualization thing it's happening mm-hmm. so that's nice a lot of a lot of this show is gets yelled over a lot more than any other podcast, I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> People yell over this show while it's playing. You're in a fight with your mom, but you've got the podcast going in one ear. Yeah, yeah, In yeah, one sh- one AirPod. <laughs> this show gets yelled over more than any other podcast, one I'd say. Amazon yeah. AirPod that isn't an AirPod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like orange, and it speaks in Spanish to you yeah. when you turn it off. <laughs> and you just, yeah, you keep that going in one ear. Yeah. Yell at your mom with your other ear. Actually, I got a Gaming pair of with one hand. free AirPods from a, a case of Coors Light a couple years ago, and they were the worst. They spoke to you in Chinese when you turned them on. Damn. And it was like they were like double the size of normal AirPods. Like they were humongous. <laughs> and they, they just said Coors Light on the case. That is a fake Coors Light case. <laughs> nice. It was snuck in by the Chinese government. They're like maybe this is how <laughs> yeah. we can we can convert <laughs> white spice. <laughs> Does that make you regret quitting drinking? Yeah, because all the cool, all the good free shit you'd always get from cases of beer. You can't get good swag like that. No, from I can't. anywhere else. Yeah, I, I can't get a like weird smelly Jägermeister T-shirt anymore. Are you are you straight edge? Well, I can't remember. I am. I was just remembering that one time I bought coke from a guy who was uh, oh, I shouldn't whatever, uh, and he worked at a liquor depot, 
And then he was like, yeah, just come in and meet me. And then there was a huge rush. And then him and I are both, like, shredded. And uh, so he's, like, trying to sell it to me without his manager catching him. And there's, like, a lineup of, like, regular people buying, like, one six-pack for the weekend. Or, like, you know, like a, bo- a nice bottle of wine or just, like, a couple, like, coolers. Like, there's no... no f- there's it, him and I were the only fucked up people in the liquor store, and, and he was working there. And then he had he was like he kept being like, "What do you want a hat? Do you want a hat?" And I was like, "I don't want a hat," because I didn't understand that he was trying to put the drugs in the hat. So I, I kept saying, "I don't want a hat," and he was like, "No, we got all these hats. Let me get you a hat." It's like, and I was like, "I don't want a hat." And then yeah, I was like, "I'm <laughs> here for drugs, <laughs> idiot." Yeah, like right beside his man. And then I just like cut a guy off, and then he wanted to play in the hat and give me the hat. And the guy was like. I was going, and at the time I like walked out, and I realized I was disappointed because I was like, "He's got my money, and I just have this fucking hat." And then I found it, and I was like, "Oh my god, that was ingenious! No one noticed." And looking back on that, I'm like, everybody was probably just like watching our jaws shake and just like, hey, "You want, uh, you, you, you want some of the, uh, you want a hat?" And it's like, yeah. So sorry, was this guy like a coke dealer you were familiar with, or did, yeah. did, were you just like, "This guy looks like he's on coke"? No, <laughs> no, we were friends. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I guess we were. I guess you could say we were friends. So British pub culture hasn't hasn't got you back into the drinking game. It's helped me not drink. Because uh, oh. it's so repulsive there. Oh my god! Yeah, like because they the, everything kind of <laughs> shuts down in London around like eleven. So for wait, really? Yeah, for I think it's for safety though. Um, like I, the tubes, like the trains stop running, and like. Um, like they don't run very late and like bars shut down. Like it doesn't seem like there's much of it. I mean, I, no one's inviting me out to go party with them. So what do I really know? But I, w- um, I would have assumed a city the size of London would be kind of like a shit's open 24 seven, but maybe it's just yeah. central London, but it's like, I thought that too, but like everything closed down pretty, like, uh, seems to close down pretty quick. So you get a lot of like, you'll, it'll be like seven, it'll be like eight thirty. And I'll be, like, biking to a show, or it'll be, like, 10-ish, and I'll be biking from a show, and uh, or just walking around. And, and it'll be, like, a Wednesday, and, and then there, there'll just be, like, people in suits, like, hammered, like, like hiccuping and vomiting in their own mouths, and then getting on the bus. <laughs> And like, yeah. and like standing and like falling into stuff. Like I watched a guy like uh, argue with his son. His son like was drunk, and his son w- looked like he was like twelve. Like his son looked like a child. <laughs> and they were in a chicken shop at like nine forty-five p.m. And then the son said something to a woman who walked in, and then his dad grabbed him and was like, "Hey, fuck, say something like that. You got your shoes." And then they start like play fighting, and then his dad like starts getting like, "Oh, you think you're fucking?" Ugh. And then like starts like actually trying to like wrestle him. And then I look behind, and he just <laughs> falls over, and his dad knocks himself unconscious on like the back of a Domino's box <laughs> oh, that's on a moped. Because they deliver everything on mopeds here, so there's a big Domino's box, and he just falls backwards and just like hits his head. He's out cold, and. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and it was like straight up like maybe <laughs> quarter to nine. <laughs> oh my God. Damn. So they just get after it a little earlier there. Yeah, they leave work. They go. Including an eight. That's cool having your 12 year old son be drunk with you. Yeah, that's kind that of is cool. cool. That is, <laughs> yeah, that's, that is that's cool. That's, that's kind of sick. I'm not saying that's not cool. What I, about, I never said none of that was cool. <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> it's so sick to have like a dad with a head injury now. Like. Yeah. Can you imagine? Head injury dad would be sick. <laughs> your dad your dad already lets you drink as a twelve year old and then he gets a head injury. Like what do you think he's gonna do to you now? <laughs> he's yeah. just more screamy, but he's more confused, you know. I saw a sick there was a sick video, I think out of England or maybe like Ireland going around a week or two ago, and it was like an extremely like berry age sixty three, like tomato red orbular man <laughs> with uh like a kid who looked like yeah, like ten to twelve. Yeah. who was definitely, like, working on that, like a very round <laughs> little boy yeah. in a bar, and, like, the little kid, like, chugs a beer, and the dad's just like, right, no. <laughs> <laughs> right on. And it's like, this is how you produce new very age 63s. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the British... <laughs> you get him fat and drunk young. The British male doesn't reach his, like, um, prime until, yeah, like, 63 when they're, like, fully activated and, and doing everything they want to do, you know? Yeah, it's like, they, they, yeah, just like a potato in your cupboard. 
Like you just leave it in there. <laughs> like six months, you open it up. You're like, what have you become? You know, like that's <laughs> that's what British look, Google. I swear, Google like uh, British um, drinking laws and see what the drinking ages I'm are. I'm gonna do that right now. Because there's, I think there's like three tiers of them. There's like what you can legally drink uh, on your own, and then what you can legally like purchase, and then what you can like how old you can be when you drink at home. Wow. British so you can be like 10 and drink at home? Not even. I don't even think that's so like yeah, you can be. I mean, uh, you technically you can do that here. I don't know if it's legal or not. It isn't. Yeah, if you have a cool enough dad, you can do that here. <laughs> if your dad has a bad enough head injury, you can do all that stuff here. If, you, yeah. if your parents' divorce uh, was bad enough and hard enough on your dad. <laughs> yeah. You, you do yeah, well, that is why I... That literally was my dad. Like, he'd come home from work, he'd work night shifts, and he'd start, like, he'd come home at, like, 10 a.m., and then just be like, fuck, man, I'm having a beer on the patio, do you want one? And I was like, hell yeah, and I'd read uh, re the WWE magazine and have kokanies <laughs> with my dad on the patio. <laughs> <Sick>. <laughs> and I'd be reading about Rey Mysterio while he's, like, getting hammered, and I have, like, three beers, and then my stomach hurts. <laughs> yeah, I would get, like, sips. I would get a sip, you had, like, wow, that's disgusting. You had three beers? Yeah, <laughs> I was like eleven. I love how you're like he's getting, he, he's getting hammered. Like... I'm drinking responsibly as an eleven year old. <laughs> yeah. Well, because yeah, I was like I didn't like that I had to pee, and it would always make my stomach hurt when I was like eleven. So I was like, yeah, I don't, I'll have like a couple. That sounds like it, pro it was probably sick though. It was yeah. awesome. Getting yeah, that's tanked, why I, reading your WWE magazine. It was sick. Well, and it's like it's a thing I did until I was. 21 <laughs> <laughs> like th those habits stayed until i was yeah it, early 20s yeah. but now you now you now you don't drink at all so it kind of goes to prove it if you start drinking young you get it's it out actually of your you get it out of your system well that what happened was i i quit but it's like i still look back on it extremely fondly oh, that's i don't great. know if that's the same for you me I, like I, st I still look back at drinking like with nothing but Basically nothing but good, like good memories. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah, I, if I had nothing going on, I I wouldn't have never stopped. You know. Yeah. That's fair. And now look what you got going on. You got a lot going on. Yeah. yeah look, and, and look at us now. Yeah. <laughs> Drink you so ruin this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. I've never done stand up uh, drunk. So every time it goes bad, there's like a little voice in my head that's like, you know, if you were like nine to 15 beers deep you could have landed that <laughs> well that's that could have gone so much better for you i have done it drunk and uh it's like i remember the first time i did it drunk i was like i was like really drunk and i was like i had to go up and i was like i just kept drinking because i didn't know how i didn't know i always thought like well i just have to keep drinking like i have to drink through because uh, i'm an alcoholic so I think that the cure yeah. for more being drunk is getting way more drunk. That I'm gonna unlock the sober yeah. part of myself, like in five years. <laughs> yeah. and, Power through it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I remember I went up, and I, I I don't think it was that good, but it was like I did fine. And then when I got off, I was like, oh wow, I can just do this drunk. And uh, <laughs> it was like four years of that. Yeah, I get that. That's why I'm kind of grateful I've never done it but it yeah it does lead to me being like every time i bomb being like you know you, you just weren't likable you were weird <laughs> you were a little looser yeah maybe a little bit lo well i've been like smoking weed at our live shows recently yeah and for the most part it's been fine but last time the joint just really hit and i was like having a fucking <laughs> panic attack like psychic flat line <laughs> thing for the last 45 minutes and just couldn't think of anything to say <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, we had a great video, so we could just play that oh my as God. I sat inside. That's so funny to think <laughs> about. Think about you like freaking out in a dead silent room, and then being like, "Oh, we got this video that I brought." Um. <laughs> <laughs> and the videos were crazy too. It was like sitting there freaking out while this like hoarder like cooks eggs on his like. <laughs> Like it was cooks nuts. a hot dog on a with a lighter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were watching some like a homeless dude cook hot dogs with candles. Yeah. How do you follow? Uh, how do you Let's... follow up? Like with with a thought after that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we didn't. We just like let's just watch more videos of this guy. <laughs> 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 Freaking the fuck out! Like everyone hates me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> everyone can tell that I'm a total fraud. <laughs> I think I think I used to have yeah. Apparently, with I used to have very fond memories of drinking. Like, I'd be like, ah, oh, it used to be so good drinking because I would look back and I'd be like, remember when you didn't have to feel bad or anything at all? Yeah. 
But now, yeah. I, what, all the times that I look back, I'm like, oh wait, that was actually bad. That wasn't cool. I was like, yeah, I, I pissed in that guy's garage. Like, <laughs> I like yeah. ruined. Yeah, I... relationships. I had fun drinking, and like I'll still drink occasionally, but like not very often. Yeah. Um, but I definitely had like periods of just extreme depression drinking. Yeah. Oh yeah. Where I was buying like cooking port because I had yes. figured out that it was the cheapest like yeah. dollar to alcohol <laughs> ratio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> drinking disgusting fucking cheap port out of plastic <laughs> bottles. Yeah. <laughs> just, I, I, yeah. I remember. I, I remember I went on the road once. Go ahead, my man. I went on the road once with this guy, and I the whole time I was every time we'd stop, I would like I kept having to ask to stop to like I was like I was just gonna smoke a cigarette, and then I would like drink two beers, and then I would like <laughs> smoke a cigarette as fast as I could, and then I drive, and then it was like eight hours, and I remember like I was just like hammered and like reeked, and I was like all fucked up, and I remember like calling my friends after their ride and being like that guy sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about. Yeah, like actually, when we were going to school, that was I always had a big drinking problem. Then I was drinking rum in the morning. <laughs> I would go to the liquor store that's in the that one downtown train station. Oh yeah, that has like the liquor store where people piss out front. <laughs> and I would buy like rum on my way to school. <laughs> go to the bathroom and take a swig of rum and stuff. I remember when I worked at Starbucks, I used to uh, I used to walk there to my shifts. And I was like 16, and I would get um, two king cans of black ice. Yes. And then a, another eight pack of black ice. I'd put the eight pack in my backpack. <laughs> I'd slam the two king cans before my shift, and then I'd go in just like red, sweaty from my walk, <laughs> hammered. And then like throughout the shift, I'd go back on my breaks and like polish off like two or three black ice, to because otherwise if I didn't, I I. The, the eight pack was a response to just doing the king cans for a while and realizing that I get really tired after about three hours. Gotta keep it going. Yeah, I would, I would start getting so sleepy and angry with everybody. So then I'd have to get the eight pack to keep it going. And then, yeah, asking one of my coworkers for like a ride home. It was awful. Well, it was kind of, like, but then it's the thing though, is like I look back on that being like, that was so fun. Yeah, I mean, that is, yeah, because yeah, you forget all the, you get how you're feeling when you to make you want to like do all that yes but then like yeah but that like if if you had to ask any random person like okay would you rather work dead sober at a starbucks and do everything you can to value that money or or you can drink <laughs> six liters of 10 percent beer every time you go in and make the job actually cost you money to go to <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which would you rather? Yeah, a hundred percent. The drink, well, and 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 like, it's just it was nice to have like a remedy. What it is is just a, it's like a laziness thing because when you ever, every time you feel bad, it's like, well, I can have fucking four liters of old English and then not feel like shit. Yeah. So it's just like having like a really quick fix for things, but then it always leads to like being worse. Yeah, I. I yeah. Uh, oh no, I can't. That's. Um, well, yeah. I mean, when I worked at, I used to work at the old spaghetti factory. Yeah. And I, I would get like hammered before work then. <laughs> but there, I literally made way more money if I was shit faced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually, I'm deeply um, unpleasant to be around <laughs> with horrific vibes. <laughs> get a little bit of liquor in me. I was like, hey, how we doing, folks? <laughs> <laughs> the circus ringleader, the ringmaster. Yeah. The old spaghetti Actually, factory. <laughs> Dude, I love. I love. I got you, obliterated you, at the old. Sp- I love how he was just. Like, Sorry, what's that? I love how he was just like, like yeah, I don't drink as. Uh, I used to. Used to. I used to drink a bit. I don't drink as much. I'll still drink on occasion. And, uh, I used to drink cooking <laughs> yeah. pork because it had a better alcohol to dollar ratio. <laughs> like, <laughs> God damn. I used to be pretty bad, but I didn't like cold turkey. But now I'll have like you know like two beers twice a month or something. Yeah, like that. that's pretty, pretty responsible these days. Yeah. One of the last times I got obliterated was at the old spaghetti factory, actually. Nice, getting some Bellinis. Uh, whatever the fuck, they had some like blue thing on special for like two dollars. Oh, nice. And I, I had fucking twelve, and everyone was just trying to enjoy spaghetti. I didn't even eat like my pasta because I was so full of this weird like blue concoction that they were making. You have some of the garlic bread. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Just a horrible, horrible feeling in your stomach for like nine hours after, which was just bread and these weird blue chemical drinks that were two dollars 
and the waitress kept coming by and be like, how's everything? And I'd be like, yeah, I'll take four more of the blue things, please. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some more of this blue shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll do what, What's a blue thing? Let's get eight more of them. They go for the table? No, no, just get them ready. Just get them ready. <laughs> for the table, everyone looks like they're putting their coats on. You're like, I'm, all, I'm really hot. <laughs> That's how it was. Everyone had a bad time except me because I was so fucking hammered. I used to. I think that's the thing. Is sorry. No, okay. go go ahead, my man. I used to like go. To, I'd like go to family events or something like that where there's just like alcohol is just available, and then my friends would be giving me a ride home because I had a DUI, and uh, they'd be like, "Oh my god, like it reeks in here! Like how many beers do you have?" And I'd be like, "Like eight. And then, <laughs> and then, and then they'd be like, right before they went to drop me off, I'd be like, "Can you just? Uh, I'm good here. You can just drop me off here." And they're like, "This is a liquor store." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm good here. I, I'm good. I just need to clear. Yeah, that's fine. Just gotta clear, clear my head before I get home. I'll just walk from here." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Oh man, yeah, your your like understanding of what responsible drinking is changes too. Because I remember being like, "I'll just take it easy today." Just chill. It's a nice Saturday. I'm only going to have nine beers. <laughs> it's going to be chill. <laughs> Low-key day. Hanging out. Nine to 15 beers. Chilling. Yeah. It totally fucks up. You're like... And then, uh, yeah, I'd go to a restaurant with, like, buddies. And they'd all, yeah, have, like, one, maybe two. And I'd be like... the wait Every time the waitress come, came by, I just, like... I, it's like a, it was like a kryptonite. I just couldn't be like, no, I'm good. <laughs> they would always be like, how's everything? I'd be like, ah, fuck, yeah, since you're here, let's get <laughs> two, two more going. Sure, yeah, that's fine. And the more you order, the more they come back. You're like, well, is she? Yeah, it's like a... She's like hanging out here. I, I literally used to think it was like, well, it's not my fault. She keeps asking if I want more. <laughs> Obviously, I do. <laughs> <laughs> what do you expect me to say? No, I'm good? <laughs> yeah, I was like, she's always coming by. Like, fuck. I don't want to waste her time. Because in my head, it's like, well, if she's here now she might not be here in 10 minutes when i am done my drink no shaking might as well get one yeah might as well get one queued up i used to think response what's the um what's the, what's the fent situation like in england zero zero fentanyl zero that's another thing is they, really? they walk around like pissing them out like okay yeah i gotta stop shit now but uh they like are generally like a miserable population here if when if or when opioids like i'll tell i've, t- I've told people about opioids here because I walk, so they just aren't over there. They're not right? so like, it's hard to describe how f- few homeless people there are. Like, and then when you yeah. when you see they them, ship them all over here or something. No, they're just not. They're like kind of like old, like cartoony homeless people. Like they're they wear they wear their coats on their head like, and they're like drunk, like in stick stick and bindle style guys. Yeah, like they're. I mean, there's there's obviously yeah. people that are like on like smoke crack and stuff like that. Like that's yeah okay. They're they're around. But they're getting the good shit. But they don't. They don't do like. Um, yeah, there's no opioids here, so there's not just like bodies laying on the ground everywhere. Damn. Damn. Wonder why that is. Yeah, it's over here. It's it's fucking. It's like it is World War Z all the time. It's crazy. Any if you talk to British people about it, they're like, you're like, well, there's yeah, you don't, you guys don't have streets lined with bodies, and then they'll be like, well, well, it's coming. It's coming. It's like, oh my god, you f- fun. Be grateful. Hmm. Uh, yeah, you like. I, I was on. I was downtown the other day. I literally had to step over a guy who might have been dead. Yeah. It is like literally streets lined with body. Like it's yeah, everywhere. It's just like it looks like. Uh, it looks like day one of some outbreak. Yeah, I like every, I don't know, month or so, somebody will like pass the fuck out in the stoop at my work or be like smoking meth out there or something. Yeah. And I'll have to like open the door and kind of like sh- push them with the door <laughs> and get my head out and be like, can you go sit next door, please? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, can you do that elsewhere, please? <laughs> There's a similar stoop. <laughs> Ten feet that way. Just go there. <laughs> that is not my problem. <laughs> man, I don't know. I... I know I told this story on the show before, but I I was at a McDonald's the other day, and you know how they have the concrete, like, bollards right by the window at McDonald's? 
It's a bollard. Like those big like concrete posts. It's like the big post with the little like reflective tape on it. Like so you don't drive your car through the drive through okay. window? Okay. Yeah, like the big concrete. So they have those. So I like I'm a pretty good driver, so I like I got my car like pretty close to the concrete thing to get my order. And then like while I was waiting, um, for my food, this like homeless guy or it was this homeless lady, like wedged herself like between the concrete thing in my car and like dragged her like, so like smeared makeup on my car. Like that's how like tight she was packed into the between the concrete thing in my car. And then like I had the, the this little like Asian kid who was working at the McDonald's. He like walked up to the window like with my food, and he was like as I was rolling my window up because this homeless lady was like squeezing between the car. And so he looked at me and he's like, "No, put the the window down. Put the roll the window down. I have your food." And then I had to like point back and be like, "No, look, there's we got we got a live one right here." And then he was he was just looked at me like, oh, my God. And then like he closed the drive-thru window. And then she was stuck between my car and the drive-thru window yelling, <laughs> screaming at both of us for nothing. And then it was just – it was one of those, like – it was like Jurassic Park. Like we just, like, just don't, don't move. Don't make eye contact. Don't look at her. Just let her – she'll pass. It was like – Was a, she scuffing up on your car? Yeah. she Like the car, like, rocked. Like she really <laughs> – she, like, almost moved my car to squeeze between the concrete and the car. And then, yeah, just chilled right between the window and m- me for, like, two minutes until she, like, squeezed between the other one and left. She, what was she, she was trying to steal your food, do you think? Uh, I, I don't, I never know what the plan is with, with homeless people. I don't really know. They, they have, they're very creative, and I never really know what their goals are when they're doing something. The cats, when they're, like, like uh, trying to fit into stuff. You're like, why? What do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you need to get in there? They feel good on your body. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It just feels good on your body. It is, is cat. They are cats. <laughs> <laughs> they just sunning themselves outside. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. And if there's like, if you leave like tuna out, more will be there than anything. <laughs> yeah. It's like they're asleep for like 11 hours in the middle of the day. In your yeah, way. and they start running around at night. <laughs> that's... <laughs> Start getting crazy, jumping on shit at night. Biting each other. <laughs> right here. <laughs> yeah, they all have bite marks out of their ears. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are cats. <laughs> they are cats. It's it's crazy. But yeah, the the like the drugs here make them like, um, total. Like uh, like the like the like it's the last of us. Like they like echolocate you and like. They're always like clicking and tracking you in the dark. Like they're evolved, sort of like crazy zombies. Whereas, I actually—that's actually—I didn't know that they didn't have. Yeah, it's quite fent or. It's kind of curious that opioids haven't made it over there. That's actually. I wonder nuts. why that is. Hmm. I wonder who. So you can. I wonder who. You can get pure black tar heroin over there. Yeah, yeah, but if you're like, you get it from like. The, the, that's the thing is there's a bunch of Europeans here so then like you, you'll you meet Europeans uh, they're causing trouble all those uh, what is it Serbs Poles yeah but the, it's like very 90s trouble 80s 90s trouble where they, they you like do heroin and then you, you change like the comparison between like what I think like a drug addict used to be where it's like you be, do heroin and then you just live to do heroin like that that is like nothing compared to like what is happening in North America where it's like now you're just charged yeah. by like meth at night and then like just the craziest opioid that shuts down like all your nervous system like during the day. Yeah. When it puts like holes in your brain, the shit here, like it literally like changes your body. Mm-hmm. Like it makes you like a totally different creature because it's all sorts of and, like, like, wild. In a bad way. Yeah, in a horrible way. <laughs> not even in a cool way. Not even like a yeah, better, not crazy. even like good holes. Doesn't make you faster. Yeah, it's not like you smoke the the meth here and you're like, I'm really good at math now. It's all, it's like you smoke the meth here and you're like, I want to eat a person. Yeah. <laughs> you smoke the, the North American meth and you're like, I want to eat a guy. Yeah, I, I think they have that yeah. here, but they don't, um, I think the depression here is like such a heavy blanket that they, uh, that's like their, that's their fentanyl. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just feeling bad. Yeah, they don't eat it in their veins. Feeling kind they, of general. They have it in their hearts. It's it's just in the air. <laughs> it's just, the, it just is the muggy wet air. I noticed like when I first moved here, I would like walk around and then it would like rain and get cold, and I would like laugh. I'd be like laughing because I'd be like, look how miserable all these people are. And now after like seven months, I'm like, 
see someone smile and I'm like, what, why? What, what are you doing that? Like, what <laughs> yeah. caused you yeah. to do You're that? Like, what's, what's up with this bloke? Yeah. <laughs> what possibly could you have to laugh at? Right <laughs> why are you, yeah, why are you smiling? I, I don't think I really see mothers, like, smile at their children. Like, um, I've seen, like, a kids call their moms cunts and then, like, the mom oh look at the husband and the husband be like, well, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Why uh, Why do you think the British are so depressed? Do you think it's the weather? Or just is it just a bad vibe country? No, it's just like... Is it all the it, occult buildings like Alan Moore talks about? Yeah, evil Aleister Crowley e- shit. Evil Aleister Crowley buildings designed to crush the spirit of the populace. I have a, th- I have a working theory. I have a theory that um, the British gave like the america like the american like were number one came from yeah like british people um well, that's the thing about the british is not so long ago they were like masters of the whole world yeah and now they're getting drunk and falling over and bonking their yeah. head on scooters at <laughs> eight thirty at night <laughs> at dominoes <laughs> yeah like <laughs> that's pretty much it though is they they used to be number one but they still haven't like let go of that so it's kind of like living i feel like I, being here is living in tiger woods's dad's house <laughs> like all the time where you're like oh you made yeah, you made something like, incredible that is also kind of fucked up but is also the best and then you are walking around just drunk in like empty you know screaming at walls and shit <laughs> that yeah Damn. i feel like it's a whole country of yeah like like uh, when you see like a, an '80s rock star now, and you're like, "Oh my god!" And it's like, you know what I, yeah. you know what I was one time. <laughs> it's like Axl Rose, the country. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 2024 Axl Rose. They, they show you videos of them in their prime, and you're like, "There's like a thousand people there at the stadium. Like that's not a big, <laughs> it's not even big in comparison." <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. They were like lords of the sea. Yeah, they, they ran the. the they ran the sea. They ran. They ran India. And they ran. Yeah, the sun never set. Yeah. They really killed it. Like, um, they they had so so much money. They still have like a massive like economy and stuff like that. But they still have this sort of like we're number one. But I think Brexit has really made them sad too. Well, and even though to like any objective viewer, clearly England is not number one at this point. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Like, no. The global. There there may be number eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, it's really yeah, just because it, 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 it's really like just w- like every time they I look at them I just think of like a drunk dad being like I could run that fast. <laughs> like I think I can run that fast. Like that feeling that I I mean I get that feeling sometimes when I like see like young like athletic like teens I'm like yeah I could fucking I could do that and then I'm like no I couldn't but it's like. Yeah, you see like drunk old men do that, where they're like, "Oh, well, fucking, I'd show them a thing." It's like, no, you wouldn't. You're, you're done. Yeah, old guys who like to fight. Yeah, who, who say they like to fight, but don't they never get in one. I don't understand what has happened so, to their body in the last forty years. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, well, dude, you can't get off the couch without like sweating. <laughs> you know, yeah. you break a sweat all the time. You're out of breath because you're angry. So, <laughs> yeah, you can work yourself into like asthma yeah. just through uh, like irritation. You're snoring and you're awake. <laughs> Are you gonna become like a, a a British citizen? No, I'm an Irish citizen. Oh, oh so, really? Yeah, so I'm like I'm, nice. I'm Irish, which is like funny because I call my dad and like I don't really have like an association with like Ireland or Ire- like my heritage. Being- he would always just be like, we're Irish, and that's what we are. And, you know, the Irish. <laughs> it's like, no, we don't know anything about the Irish. And so... Have you have you gone to visit Ireland? Yeah, a couple since times. Since you've been over there? A couple times. And it's... Hell yeah. I can speak... How does it stack against England? Um, it... I like it, because I feel like it's got a similar misery, but theirs is more like... Um, has more character to it, you know? Right. Like yeah. This, mm-hmm. from what I understand about Ireland, is like they're they're the same British or alcoholics, but they like riddles. Yeah, yeah, and they're but they're ugly, yeah. and they're ugly in a charming way. Whereas like British people are just like, <laughs> British people are just, oh my just ugly, just busted people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, how how would you like rate attractiveness between Canada and the UK? Would yeah. you, are they more busted than us? Because we have some some slime folk. We have a lot of mm-hmm. yeah, sl- like slug let guys me, here. Let me be very clear. You guys have no fucking <laughs> idea. <laughs> What, <laughs> what or how bad I can get? <laughs> you don't understand. That's what this episode's going to be called. You you have no idea how bad things really are. <laughs> you don't know. Whatever you guys have to deal with in fentanyl <laughs> is easily outweighed by just generally speaking their bodies and faces. <laughs> so is like all those um, videos I've seen online of like British slags out drinking. Is that accurate to reality? It was like heavy makeup, that's crop top they're, puffer jacket. They're in. They're like those are like northern girls. So apparently they're like northern girls are like that. They like get spray tans and stuff like that. But they just don't have. They they also don't have like the like black American like influence on their culture. So they 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 don't have like butts. Like they don't have ass, right? So like, <laughs> right. the white girls haven't like figured out how to genetically engineer themselves to like have fat asses. Like, it is crazy how that happened. We're like thirty years ago, nobody had an ass. Yeah, everyone was just like Hank Hill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and then somehow people have developed asses. Yeah, through some sort of cultural to physiognomical osmosis. What What's funny, I think, hmm. about England is England is just an entire country where like white people were left to their own devices, and it's just this like miserable, ugly, alcoholic hole. <laughs> It's, just yeah. like, it's like the whole world just left like white people to do their thing in one country and then it's like how's it going and they're like oh it's fucking awful here man <laughs> it's like yeah it's like that's why they left they like left and they came and they showed up to other places and then they told other people like how bad th- their lives were and then they took all the resources because it's like empty like uh, it's weird going uh, to like outdoor places here because there's no life there's no animals <laughs> There's no fish in it. Well, because the, they, like, chop down all their trees pretty much, right? Yeah, there's, there's like, the trees are there because they put them there. And then, like, there's all these, like, fields and stuff but for farming. And then, but there's, like, I think if, like, any animal has ever tried to live, like, they've been killing, clearing everything out of the way for the king's path or whatever the fuck for, like, hundreds and hundreds of years. So there's just, like, you look out and you're like, oh, wow, look at all that. There's no wilderness at all. It's just, like, trees. And I feel like... The more I say, the more I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> um, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, uh, I feel like I should say some positive things about it. Yeah, what's what's the best thing in England? Binley Mega Chippy? <laughs> <laughs> um, foods, fairly affordable. Oh, that's nice. They don't think so, though. So then it's like, okay. <laughs> Um, they don't think it's affordable. Um, well. How's the fish and chips? Must be good. Got to be. At it once, it's you. You know, you've had fish and chips before, right? <laughs> yeah, but yeah. we're significantly further from like the ocean. It's. Yeah. Think about, I've had them in BC though. Yeah, think about that dish. What is it? It's deep fried fish and chips. Yeah, and fries. Mm-hmm. It's, it's fine there. How how much variation could you to get that better, you know? <laughs> well, like one time I was out on Vancouver Island and I uh, I went to this place that was like a it was like a bowling alley slash bar slash restaurant. Nice. But it was right like you looked out front and there's like a harbor full of boats and shit. Mm-hmm. And their fish and chips was notably good because it was like thirty feet from the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, but I imagine in England. They're such sickos. They probably like catch the fish and then freeze it and sit on it for like four months before they serve it. I mean, yeah, like that's even <laughs> even if they're a block from the ocean. That is what's <laughs> happening. Like it's it's. <laughs> um, I have a fish and chip story. I uh, went. Oh hell yeah! I was in Victoria with my dad and my. Uh, we were on summer vacation and my sister. Uh, I was like thirteen, I think, and I really wanted fish and chips really really bad. And we were waiting for my sister to come in because she had work or whatever. She was, like, coming in. So we were waiting for her. So I was, like, begging my dad, like, go get fish and chips. So we went to this restaurant in Victoria. And the lady sits us down at a table that is, like, handicap accessible, like, wheelchair accessible. And so two chairs are on one side. And she's, like, you can sit here. She's, like, 
um, it's a bigger table. She's like, if you don't want to sit beside each other, you just pull the other chair around. And my dad goes, yeah, we wouldn't want to look like a couple of fruits now, would we? <laughs> and she's like, oh, uh, and then walks away. And my dad's laughing. And I'm like, dad, like, I, I don't really get, like, I, I just am embarrassed that he's trying to, like, be funny and flirty. And then yeah. that's, like, literally his idea of flirting. And uh, <laughs> and then so he's we're waiting, we're waiting, we don't get menus. He flags someone down. And then the bartender comes over and he's like, you guys have to leave. Like, we don't tolerate that uh, kind of speech around here. Like, you, you guys have to go. And my dad's like, what kind of speech? What, what do you mean? Kind of, what kind of speech are you talking about? What, what did I say? What did I say? And the guy was like, I'm not re- you know what you said. And my dad was like, I don't know what the fuck. What did I say? What did I say? What did I say? And the guy was like, I'm not repeating what you said. And he's like, well, I'm not leaving until someone tells me what, what I said. And uh, so then the guy leaves. And then the manager comes over and he's like, you guys have to leave. Like, you guys really have to leave. Like, we are kicking you out. Like, you guys cannot eat here. And my dad's like, what? Why? What, what did I say? What did I say? No one is going to tell me what I said either. No one is told me what I said. And then the guy's like, uh, leaves. And then the owner comes over and he's like, you guys can stay here as long as you want. Um, no one's gonna serve you. <laughs> no one's gonna give you any food. And my dad was like, "Why? Because what? What did I say?" And, and the guy was like, "I don't care. Like, I'm not. I'm not saying what you said. You know what you said. I'm just not. You stay here all all night if you want. You're not gonna eat here. So." And then my dad's like, like yelling and screaming, and screaming, begging someone <laughs> to tell him what he said. And uh, so then we leave, and uh, and then. We go to the, we literally walk out of the restaurant and we cross a rainbow crosswalk to get to <laughs> another fish and chip restaurant. And the host was on the phone. And I remember being so scared that the other fish and chip place had called this fish and chip place and been like, there's a couple, there's a man and a, and a boy coming. A, a man and his homophobic son. <laughs> yeah. And they do not want to sit together, so do not give them fish and chips. They, they didn't. We wound up getting fish and chips and stuff, but that was like the big story for like the rest of the summer. T- people would yeah. tell that my dad would be like, what? I can't take fruit? It's not like I call them a couple of fish. Well, <laughs> and it is f- fruit, too. Which is a pretty mild, pretty mild, all things considered. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it is. I think it's on the person who's upset when you're dealing with someone over 40 years old. And being like, I can't believe he said that. He's like, really? Yeah, that is the part that bugs me when 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 very when liberal people are like, I can't believe that they would say. It's like, what do you mean you can't believe? What are you talking he's, about? You can't believe. It's like you don't have uncles. You don't have any. Yeah. What are you talking about? Does no one trust you in your yeah. family? No one trusts you. Yeah. So that's what you're saying. It's, it's like when uh, family. That's control. exactly what it is. It's like every time, like a celebrity, like remember when Sean Connery got in trouble for talking about how it's fine, it's like fine yeah. to hit girls, <laughs> and then it's like, well, yeah, you're talking to like a sixty-three-year-old man, like what? Yeah. Well, and He's also it's Sean women Connery who his whole life. His whole life. Been, well, what are you expecting? He's probably never. It's Sean Connery. He probably never even had a woman complain about him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's literally never gotten in trouble for that ever in his life. Yeah, the Scottish accent. And then everyone was like, "Sounds like it's gonna hit you." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I was meaning to ask. I saw that you did a show in Serbia, or you were in Serbia. Uh, I didn't do any shows. I flew. I went there for this guy who. Um, a audition for here. And he wanted to put <laughs> me in this movie. <laughs> he had this room full of camcorders. <laughs> and uh, that's it. That's the end of the story. Nothing happened after that. Nothing came of it. How was. <laughs> anyway, that's that. And nothing. It was fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, they, Wait, how, how really, was so, sorry, you got flown out there and then nothing happened? No, I flew myself out there because this guy, I thought he was like a big deal booker. So when I first showcased for him, he was like, oh, that was good. Even though I bombed, I was like, this is I made it. This is me starting to make it. And then, like literally, every other comic I've talked to has been like, he's the most hated man in British comedy. Like he, <laughs> he still owes me like hundreds of pounds. Like he doesn't pay ever. Uh, and anyways, okay. I flew. He, I like paid my own way to go to Serbia. And then they uh, were supposed to do a couple shows. And then they there was a a terrorist attack. So they had a day. Of, oh, they had a day of mourning. But then no one would talk about it openly in public. We like, they couldn't discuss it in public. But then we went to like speakeasies and stuff, and they were like a little more open. They were like, 
is like Serbia committed the terrorist attack, and then Serbia had the day of mourning. Oh damn! So okay, I didn't hear about this at all. No. So Serbia committed it on what the Cro- the Croats Cro- Croats or something? No, on the uh, Co- on Kosovo. So Kosovo is like independent, but Serbia is like you're not, and then Kosovo is like yes we are, and it's been like that for like a long time, and they had a really bloody mm-hmm. civil war apparently in the nineties, and uh, and then so there was a separatist group that that's what they called them that went into Kosovo and went into took a bunch of hostages into a church. And I think they tried to like overtake the government or something, the local government, but failed miserably and killed a, killed a few police. And then the police just all just oh. killed all of them. And then the um, the leader of the the president of Serbia or whatever, like literally the next day, was like, they were separatists. They have nothing to do with us. They we didn't do that. That wasn't us. That was them. They're terrible. We should have a day of mourning. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. Holy shit! That's a What's, wild. What's uh, is does Serbia have like spooky vibes? <laughs> yeah, or is it nice? it's a spooky country. Why would you think it has spooky vibes? I don't know. I've, the only <laughs> thing I've seen out of there is a Serbian film, and it, that's their their like major artistic output. Well, is this one kidding, movie. I feel very, like all those Balkan spooky. countries <laughs> are are all like probably <laughs> geographically nice, but you. everything you hear about them is just like scary, <laughs> <laughs> scary shit. I went there, and there was a terrorist attack. You. Yes, <laughs> it's <been> very spooky. <laughs> did, did you guys see that? Um, like, there was that um, terrorist attack in Russia recently. Yeah, and they were like wheeling the guys out, and one of the like they clearly were like beating and torturing these guys. Yeah, and yeah. one of the guys got wheeled out for a sentencing, uh, unconscious. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Just in a wheelchair, totally unconscious, getting declared guilty. Jesus! <laughs> one day after they, <laughs> oh <my laughs> they convicted god. them in one day, as far as I can tell. Yeah, that whole section of the world, uh, yeah, deeply frightens me. Yeah, yeah. it is really scary. I think it's, my only experience with Serbian people was that there was this like a uh, group of Serbian guys at my middle school, and uh, they, they were like 13 years old, and they just found out about Jersey Shore, and so it was like the weirdest case of code switching I'd ever seen in my life. It's probably big for a young Serbian boy when you discover yeah, Guidoism. Like eight, eight Serbian guys in tap out shirts and spiked hair, like code switching to like New Jersey Italian. And then being like, bro, we are going to hit the club tonight for sure, my man. Oh, and get so many ladies. Oh, yes. It was so weird. And I, and in my head, I was like, this is what all Serbian people it are kinda, for the next eight years until I meet another one. A lot of them are like that. Like, I went out with um, one uh, this guy, the guy who was supposed to run the show, and I never got paid for any of it. Um, and then I sat in a bar with him. And it was, like, cool. They were, like, smoking weed. Smoking weed's like, very illegal there. But they, like, smoked a bit of weed, and then, like, they were, like, having drinks and stuff, and I was, like, talking to these other guys, and he was like, they're comedians, too. They're comedians, too. And I, like, talked to them when he left, and they were like, yeah, well, he they he gets us to try it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and then one of the guys is, like, he's trying to speak. He's like, uh, and they do this thing where they start saying stuff. And it's, like, really dark and horrible, and you, I start laughing at it, and they're saying it to make me laugh. But then if I laugh too many times, they, they stop and they go, like, that's not funny. Uh, <laughs> that's a classic Serbian goof. <laughs> it's Talking about the terrorist attack that just happened yeah. and then laughing about it and then being like, that's enough. Yeah, as soon as I like laugh, This is our joke. Yeah, I, I, I laugh the third time and they're like, oh, why, why would you laugh at that? Why, why do you think that's funny? It's like the last three things you said were funny and we, you were laughing. And it's like, yeah, but that one was serious. <laughs> <laughs> and, like he was like talking about uh, he was like my he was like my province is he's famous for um, and then that guy I was with was like stabbings and then he was like no no not um, oh, how do you say it and he's like shootings and he's like no that's the other province they were big on guns he's like we're not what is the word and then he's like suicide we're well we're known for <laughs> killing ourselves more than anybody else and i was like oh and he laughed and so i laughed and then he went dead serious again and so i went dead serious again and then he was like he said like he he there's ways to kill yourselves and, and there's good ways to do it and bad ways to do it he was like i he's like i knew a man who's uh who taped himself to death he's like that's why we're known because we, we kill ourselves 
he he took tape. So he taped himself. He taped his body, and then with his arm, he taped his head and his mouth, and then used his other arm to tape his other arm, and then he taped himself until he died. Oh my Jesus, God. that's like the most Serbian yeah. ass suicide. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane yeah. waste of what tape. Yeah, fuck? he's and then he's we're laughing at that, and then he's like. He's like the best way. He's like the best way you're supposed to do it is you tie a rope to your neck, and then you tie a rope to the tree, and then you get in your car and you drive as fast as you can. <laughs> That's such a Looney Tunes ass way to kill yourself. What the fuck? You tie a piano wire around your neck. <laughs> So you get someone to hold a piano up above the street, yeah. and yeah. then you walk under it. Have you ever seen a funny little Damn, ro- that a bunch of shit? Funny little rooster. You get a funny little rooster. <laughs> you chase after him as fast as you can. You just need <laughs> with an anvil. You need to find a guy with a big mallet. <laughs> so have you been? Have you been bouncing around the continent? Um, I went to Serbia. I think I saw you went to Euro Euro Disneyland, right? Oh, I did. did I went to I went to Disneyland Paris. Yeah, I took that. How was that? Uh, pretty good. What was the smell like there? Um, fine, actually. It's France. It's Paris. So it's like, it's still like America Disneyland, but it's like here. Right. So it's French and snobby. Paris is sick. Paris is clean. So you can get like escargot and stuff. You get groped, basically, is what happens. <laughs> yeah, you can get groped. You get sexually assaulted. <laughs> um, in Disney World. Um, and then I was fine. And then, cause it was like, I was like, kind of like, oh, I don't really want to, like, I, I took my girlfriend there for, as a surprise for her birthday and our anniversary. And then like, so part of me was feeling like a bit insecure that I was like, we were going to Paris to go to Disneyland. But then I spoke to enough French people that I was like, fuck you. I'm going to Disneyland. You know, (laughs) you guys are such dickheads. Like I would speak to people in French and they would answer me in English and they did it so many I used the wrong bathroom once. Oh, man. That was the only time anyone ever uh, spoke back to me in French. It was when I made a mistake. And they... Oh, my God. So then I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to Disney. That's a good move. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that Just was... the spite trip to Euro Disneyland. <laughs> I'm going to America. I'm going to your tiny little America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck y'all. I'm here for America. Yeah. Did you have um Did you have any like Da Vinci Code moments at in Paris? Mm. No, we the king was in town and my girlfriend was trying to find him. I guess that's kind of Da Vinci Code. <laughs> but King King Charles? Yeah. Hmm. So he was in town trying to locate him to to do the to execute the plan, right? Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what the plan was. He was probably um, getting components for the cancer gun he was going to use on Kate. <laughs> yeah. She was trying to <laughs> special French components. She was trying to locate what parking garages would be near where the king was going to be she, at any given time. She was trying to follow the cars. There was like lines up, line up the cars. There's all these delegates there. Like it's Paris. This is a kind of the, kind of the cool thing is you just walk around and you're just like. Like you're just a piece of shit, and then you just like a bunch of black cars drive by you, and you're like, "Oh my god, they run the world! That's wild!" <laughs> yeah, that is that would be trippy. Mm-hmm. That'd be really trippy. That'd be cool yeah. though. I'd um. They call it gay Paris. <laughs> <laughs> what part? Did you... <laughs> you know, gay, gay, gay Paris. <laughs> <laughs> that famous. <laughs> That, that that famous I've phrase. I've heard in um, I, I've heard. I think it's r- like Ru- Russia and Serbia. People are like way more outwardly homophobic. Like your your dad would have no trouble making fruity jokes in Serbia. He'd probably get like kicked Russia out for stuff. using fruit instead of the other one. <laughs> your your, bi- your bike brand. Yeah, my bike brand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fagioli. Fagioli. Oh, look like a couple of fucking yeah, they bicycles p- over here. <laughs> they probably have. Let's let's look up. What's uh, a look well, it's up. homophobic it's, it's slur? Illegal. Russian. It's illegal to be gay in Russia. So, it's R- yeah, Russia, you're not allowed. That's like playing. Also, hockey. I looked up the British drinking laws. Yeah. Uh, British drinking laws are really funny. It's like if you're under 18, um, you can't drink alcohol in pubs. But then, if you're 16 or 17 and you're accompanied by an adult, 
you can have you can't buy it but someone can buy you booze at a restaurant so you can drink in pubs you just can't go alone so it's like having a learners yeah like as long as you're like adults there you can and they buy it for you it's fine Mm -hmm. and then if you're under 16 you can go to the pub if you're accompanied by an adult but it it literally says it depends on specific conditions. There's it's just this this article basically says there's no rules. Doesn't anyone can because they're like, if you're under eighteen, you can't buy alcohol except in special cases. Sometimes it's fine, and then if you're under sixteen, you can't go to a pub and get drunk except for special cases. Sometimes you can go to a pub and someone can buy you alcohol. So it seems like there's absolutely no rules. Well, it's just if you really want to get drunk. Yeah, and someone <laughs> buys it for you. You don't understand. I really wanted to get shit for this you. Is, that would rule, actually. That's probably... This is from drinkaware.co.uk, which is the government website. In England, Scotland, and Wales, it's not illegal for someone beta- between the ages of 5 and 17 <laughs> to drink alcohol <laughs> at home or on other <laughs> private premises. But this does not mean it's recommended. <laughs> That's five and seventeen. Five rate. So kindergarten. Huh. If you're in preschool, no. Dr- Damn, that rules. Okay, so I was just looking up homophobic slurs in Russia. Yeah. yeah. And apparently, a very popular one is "gayrup," which is a portmanteau of "gay" and "Europe." That's <laughs> gayrup. Gayrup. <laughs> That's funny. Interesting. I, I can't. British like. Can you imagine like a British day home? It was just a bunch of six-year-olds getting shit-faced. Yeah, like imagine being four at British daycare, and then like the six, the five-year-olds are like crushing beers and making fun of you. Like that would that would fuck me up for life. <laughs> That'd be so it's on the playground, and they're like they're smoking cigarettes and crushing beers at five, Damn. and make, I was like, can't wait till I'm five and I can have beers. <laughs> God, I can't wait till I'm five. Oh, I'm five so bad. That's ins- Oh man! Yeah, when I'm five, <laughs> Imagine I'm getting hammered when I'm five. Walking to pick your kid up and it's dead quiet in there, just silent. And you talk to the teacher, you're like, "Is it nap time?" Because they all look like they're dead, like they're just yeah passed out on death. No, they're just drunk. You literally <laughs> have to like grab a kid, like a like a. You just have to grab a kid by the shirt and like drag him out of a out of a, a di- uh uh. It's like kind of hard to tell. Like when you're five, it's like hard to tell if you're drunk or sober. Anyway, yeah, your balance is all shitty. You don't know how to talk very well. Mm -hmm. You're sleeping all the time. You're throwing up. Like I'd be, if I had a five year old and he was like sneaking booze, it'd be impossible for me to tell. Yeah, I would piss. You're always peeing. (laughs) I I, had a flashback the other night to. Yeah, it's like this exact same as just being drunk. So maybe the mm-hmm. British are like, well, he's already doing it. Yeah. Let him. I had a flashback the other night right before I went to bed of this memory from preschool where they had, uh, I, I went to pee and uh, this kid, st- they didn't have any stalls at my preschool, which I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe that, maybe that's like a bad thing, but you, you just had to like shit. <laughs> like e- even on the toilet. Yeah. Like there were no stalls at the preschool I went to. So like kids would just be shitting and they'd like, right. You just see. And I remember this kid stood. He pulled his pants all the way down to his ankles to pee, obviously, mm-hmm. while he was standing. And uh, he just started shitting while he was standing. Up. <laughs> <laughs> and the, I remember so clearly, like the the like probably the sixteen year old girl who worked there, like running in, and she was like, "Clayton, you're pooing. You're pooing, Clayton." <laughs> and it just like, he was just dropping <laughs> piles on the floor. <laughs> and then he just pulled his pants up and was like, "Whoops!" And then washed his hands and left. <laughs> Didn't even wipe. No, because no, I think in the five-year-old's head, he's like, "Well, I didn't plan on shitting, so why would I wipe?" <laughs> he's like, "That just ha- that just happened." You know, I'm not. It's not poo protocol right now. It's pee. Protocol. <laughs> there is no protocol. It's an emergency situation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I do remember kids used to yeah do the f- like pants around the ankles to piss out a urinal thing. Yeah, just full ass. Yeah. Full butt cheeks out. Speaking of scene, speaking of kids, man, it. they uh, British people think pedoph- pedophilia is like. The funniest thing. <laughs> they, like, there's nothing funnier to them than pedophilia. 
Well, <laughs> like literally. I mean, funny. we can't we can't really harsh on that too much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I find that funny too. Like, but like, I mean, like if you go to a comedy show, the, one of the first things the MC is going to call someone in the front row is a pedophile. Like, really? They'll be like, we're a nonce. They're a nonce. They hit him with nonce. Pedo. They mm. they say pedo. Uh, pedo. How, do, pedo how do they say it? Pe- pedophile. 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 Pedo. Yeah, and they'll hit him with like pedophile, and people will laugh like no children have ever been assaulted by adults <laughs> they laugh so they, hard that's so well i would have i don't even want to look this up but like given their laws for just drinking i can't imagine what they have for age of consent over there oh my god yeah it's probably i mean five to seventeen it's probably, five to seven it's probably the exact <laughs> same thing five to seventeen <laughs> is not illegal but it's also not recommended <laughs> I like the, I like yeah. England. The more we talk about it, the more it's like most of their laws are actually like kind of just suggestions yeah. and recommendations. Yeah, it sounds less um, hellish than I've been led to believe. Yeah, yeah it doesn't. It sounds pretty chill. Oh yeah, do it. it sounds great. Do it. Everyone's yeah. everyone's drunk. Have sex with everyone's a, a pedo. Get that, get that child <laughs> you know. drunk. Let them like have sex with them and like because what? What are they gonna live up? Li- grow up God, and be it happy. It sounds like. You're not gonna be happy. Libertarian <laughs> heaven. <laughs> You're gonna be miserable no matter what you do. For all our libertarian listeners, check out England. <laughs> you guys love it. Five to seventeen is so nuts. It's that's so awesome. It's a big that would, lump of like that's like your biggest development years. Yeah, and it's and it's just kind of not recommended you drink during those years. Yep. You're like, well, right. you probably shouldn't, but it's your life, man. Yeah, we looking looking at a six year old with a coke and he being like, "It's your life, bro." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it's up that. Up to you, man. I wouldn't advise against it, but I wouldn't recommend it either. It's up to you, man. Say, you know? it's yeah, a, it's your life. It's the exact same way I feel about like Disneyland. It's like I wouldn't recommend it, but <laughs> I'm not gonna say don't do it. I'm not gonna say it was well, hard. It wasn't. It, well, I don't think it was bad. It's not bad all the time. <laughs> That's so fucking funny that I think that probably comes from the fact that like England used to have to they employed like six year olds. The expectation was like, well, he should have a job. So, what are we gonna not let him have a beer? Well, yeah, I mean, back on those old um, sailing ships, yeah, they would have like ten year olds on there, yeah, and they would get their ration of rum, yeah, and your ration of rum was, I think, a pint a day. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably just Which, an old cultural thing from like, well, we can't ask him to work in a fucking coal mine yeah. and not have a beer after work. Yeah, I mean, we're when they're 5 to 17, they're on ships, they're in coal mines. <laughs> they're, at wa- <laughs> they're at war. <laughs> so who am I to tell them they can't have a beer? Yeah, they're going to have to kill someone. So, ah, fuck, you can have some, you can have a Jack and Coke or whatever. Might as well have a couple. You yeah. can have some very Guinness. civilized, very European. Yeah. Even if they, and then, yeah, it, fuck, you know what? He can fuck an adult woman, too. Though. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Whatever. Or <laughs> let him get some. <laughs> He's going to war. Or an adult man. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. It's fine. Who cares? It's actually Well, funny. I mean, that's the classic. It's funny when that um, happens. <laughs> it's really funny. Watch how I think funny. that's those like the, the classic. The funniest things. Like, funny. Those are funny pranks that, like, the meanest adults would ever play. It's like, let's get this kid drunk. And then also you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the classic, like, British upper-class boarding school experience. Right. Is you go there and you get gay molested. <laughs> yeah. And then you become a Tory politician. That's a big thing here. <laughs> right. is that, like, then you go to the House of Lords. They, get, they do get molested here. That's I've heard whispers of that. It seems like part of their culture is that if you go to private school... Um, you get molested? I, I think, like, famously at, like, Eton and shit. There's molestation going on? Yeah. Damn. I think because in North America, everyone's on, everyone's so staunch on like, well, not everyone, but like the majority of like the people are like um, heavy on like uh, QAnon and like Epstein stuff. Pedophilia is like such a, such a no go for like jokes. Because they really think that people are like, well, I think people are doing it. Like, it's very obvious people are doing it. So they like, yeah. They're like, they think people are doing it like right now, and and the the threat is like really high. Whereas here, they're like, well, whatever. My kid's drunk. He'll fucking take a swing. Like he, they believe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, whatever happens, he can just drink it off. Kid's, yeah, it's his life, man. If you want to fuck an adult man, I don't give a shit. <laughs> as long as my kid's drinking in front of me, if, as long, I'm not worried. As long as my kid's drinking in front of me, I swear to God, if he goes to his room, slams the door, and starts ripping drinks in there. 
then something's up. Yeah. Then, then yeah. I'm starting to suspect that one of the funniest things of all time has probably happened. <laughs> <laughs> so have you been developing pedo jokes to fit in? I have I already have one um, that I was do. I did in Canada is like, it was just, it's just like a jokey joke. And like, since I got here, like they don't like my long winded stuff. I don't think anyone ever did, um, but I they really don't like it here, and uh, so I my bits haven't really been working. So I just like cut everything down to like, or oh, I just looked for short jokey jokes that I could like put in a set to be fast and get because everybody kind of like the style here is like fast, and it's one of them that's like it's not even fast. It's still a bit of a setup, but it's jokey, and we, at home in Canada because it's like the joke is like essentially like I feel. I go to the gym and I see two guys in the locker room with smaller penises than I have. That's like one of the points. I'm like, can you believe that? I'm like, two guys, smaller penis. Well, they were boys <laughs> technically, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the joke. It's not that big of a joke. It's like it, it deserves a laugh. It will destroy but they love it over there. a room. Like it will bring the fucking house down when I say it. It's insane. Boys do have small penises. It's, it's like I'll get sixty percent of the crowd laughing on like most stuff, and then that is one of the only jokes in my act that will like I have to wait for them to finish laughing because they're like grabbing their chests and like looking yeah. looking for hold defibrillators. For applause, hold for applause. They will applaud that joke. They'll applaud that joke. They love that. I, I, I'm, it's crazy. That's so funny. That's so funny. Damn. Yeah, that's interesting. That's so fucking funny. I do gotta go yeah, though. I'm sorry, guys. It is... Oh no, no it's all good, man. man. Thank, thank you for thank you, thank you for joining for, uh, us. Joining us for our man. special England report from a <laughs> Chrome Boys England correspondent, <laughs> yes. Wild Bill Hannigan. I love. Being I know statistically we have like we have like four listeners over there <laughs> so if you have anything you'd like to promote to those four guys i mean i don't want to tell them where i'm at i just like said talk about how <laughs> fucking ugly everyone is here and how like just <laughs> they're not gonna leave their house it's <laughs> fine they don't okay. yeah they're not gonna go outside well keep, tell them to keep listening to this podcast follow me on instagram i guess um and yes yeah link in description if i remember yes and if you guys could please if they have or look it up yourself yeah lazy. <laughs> look it up yourself. <laughs> if they say anything to you i would love to know i would love to know what they have to fuck hell yeah to defend themselves <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so angerland boys get at us in the comments yeah let us know let us know if you, if uh everything he said is facts or if molestation is if you got let us know if you got molested if you're a british guy listening <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. and if you find it funny no, NBD. <laughs> NBD. <laughs> Not that bad. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Will. Thank you for, for joining us. For nice to see you. Being beamed in. This was sick. Thanks, It's boys. been a pleasure. It's been a bloody pleasure. It's been a, a damn bloody pleasure. <laughs> in it. In it. In it. <laughs> in it. <laughs> Isn't it? Isn't it great? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right, cunt Will Hannigan. <laughs> Mashallah. Uh, blessings be upon you, Will. Thank you very much for joining us. Best of luck uh, across the pond, my man. Peace, brothers. Peace be with you. All right. Take care, man.